Hello, everybody. So as uh, Michele introduced uh, the title, so we'll discuss about uh, singularity containers on traditional HPC and cloud infrastructures. And this work was done uh, together with uh, Jaranan. So the outline, first of all, the motivation, then the user experience. So as a user on traditional HPC and then as a user on a HPC in the cloud, then singularity, how does it feel for a user? And then some benchmarking. So we'll do, I'll show you Ohio State University micro benchmark, latency and bandwidth, and uh, machine learning TensorFlow example. So in the previous talk, uh, the, the public cloud was mentioned. So let's look for a second at the forecast. So what's expected from the, from the cloud is that uh, in the next four years, they will have a, a high growth, so around 20%. And so these are the figures for the infrastructure as a service and for software as a service. And in absolute value, now it's like one quarter the revenue from the global revenue of semiconductor industry. And it's going to be in 2012, it's expected to be close to half. So what, what would we expect? What should we expect uh, having in mind this, uh, this growth? So of course we like to expect more, uh, we like to have more competitive prices more regions and probably more heterogeneous systems because they can grow only if they can uh, cover more uh, more needs. So now if we, if, we, if we look at the more regions, what can we say about, uh, about Switzerland? So in Switzerland, public cloud is already available. Google Cloud Platform is available starting from March this year. And Azure announced two regions in Switzerland. So regarding regions, it's clear that uh, we have more regions. Then about more heterogeneous systems, what can we say about uh, HPC? So we already noted from the, the previous talk that uh, it looks like HPC is coming in the cloud. And now as for press releases, so what the vendor advertise is that HPC is in the cloud. So. <clears throat> intensive compute nodes. Does it have also? Yeah. So from Amazon, what are they saying is uh, basically that uh, they have, this is the latest generation and they provide this bandwidth. It's not so much that who is providing it, what is the latency. Then about Azure, so they announced it some time ago that they have Cray in Azure. So we, we saw also in the last talk, AXE series. Then last year in last quarter, they announced this new Age series in preview where they have AMD Epic, quite fat memory nodes, and they have infinite band available. And just two days ago, they make it uh, in production. So it's available to be used and also they have also from Intel with nodes, eight giga per virtual co core, again, infinite band. And Google Cloud, they also announced similar system, but they are not saying too much about the networking. <clears throat> so it looks like uh, HPC, right, is in the, in the cloud. But then uh, if we have our application that run on, uh, on a traditional uh, system, and uh, how can we make this application compatible with a uh, future uh, HPC in the cloud? Here containers uh, might be one of the solution. So Singularity is advertised as the container solution for HPC. And uh, why, why containers? As I said, for portability. So containers 
improve portability and can address the reproducibility issue in research. We did a, did a survey inside the Enhancer where we asked people that do kind of consultancy to the researchers and they share the same view. The researchers are not there in terms of adoption of containers, but, but people that are doing the consultancy for deployment, they use containers. And uh, what we are doing now, we're doing also a survey regarding the infrastructure providers. So we, Enhancer, will be very happy to, to, to learn more also from uh, the infrastructure providers that are here and not part of Enhancer. And uh, so if you, if you are interested, uh, please fill in the form that is behind this link. Every time where you see something, uh, Underline, it's, uh, it's a link behind, and uh, we'll share also the results with you. So now, why, why Singularity? So Singularity was, uh, was developed at uh, Berkeley Lab and for HPC use cases. Supports multi-tenancy. We learned more about uh, Singularity in, the, in the, the talk, in the previous talk. Then it's open source, BSD, three closed license, it's under active development. There are 12 contributors that did more than 100 commits. Has also commercial support. It seems that is kind of worldwide use, if you can say this for uh, containers technology in HPC, and it's also recommended. And has a big, uh, big community, Google Group, Slack. And there is also a small community in Switzerland inside the enhancer where we are using uh, Singularity. So now, how, how uh, does, uh, what's the main idea of sing uh, in Singularity? So on, a, on the infrastructure, we have the host operating system. There are some drivers, some middleware. And then there is the MPI with the MPI, the runtime and the library. There is the SSH server and in our app, we we are using the MPI and uh, we have it as a shared li library. So now in, when we use Singularity, what do you need? You need the MPI run from the host, SSH server, and then on your container, you should also have MPI and shared library, and then the MPI run will talk with the MPI library from the container and uh, hopefully this is able to talk also with your middleware and drivers here such that you get all performance that is available. So this is the way how it works, that, which is different than Saros because we need this, uh, the dependency chain is a little bit uh, bigger. So this, the compatibility that is uh, required because we need compatibility between the container, MPI, and the drivers that are on the host. So now if, let's look at two, two, two systems, so um, HPC systems. So traditional HPC and the HPC in the public cloud. So here we pick Euler 4 from uh, ETH Zurich uh, Scientific IT services, the HPC group. And uh, so the system, 36 cores, all cores, of course, available. Hyper-threading is available. Fat memory, no, kind of, for intensive computing and infinite band available. Then if you look at public cloud Azure, and we pick HP series, there they use uh, this processor where you can Notice that there are 24 core per socket. So if you here, there are only 44 available virtual calls to the user. So this means four cores are probably used by the supervisor. Hyper tracing is not mentioned, so probably is disabled. And based on specification, there are eight gigabits per per core. The memory. This is the memory per this is the the virtual core and the infinite band. Now, uh, what about the user experience? So I experienced this system as a, as a user. So if, when, I, when I run on 
traditional HPC, it's ready to be used. In our case, the LSF is used. On public cloud, one needs to set up, one can set up a Slurm cluster via given technology, but yeah, it's something that we have to do. Then on traditional HPC, I personally, as a user, I don't have to do too much <coughs> maintenance setup. This is the sysadmin that is taking care. On public cloud, I am fully responsible for this, this part. Then how does it look? Traditional HPC login compute nodes. Here you have a master and execute nodes, pretty similar. They are regarding the, the flexibility. So on traditional HPC, it's moderate. If you want it to be, to be there available and not in and you're not doing by yourself, why on HPC as an admin, you can install whatever you want, even drivers, you like the MPI implementation, it's up to you. You have, of course, queue system, but here in the public cloud, if you are admin uh, and there is a high availability, then you'll be able to, to just do your job and has also auto scaling. The traditional HPC it's generally is working as expected, well, uh, this system, there are some issues. So now in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, singularity, the, what's the user experience for singularity? So the way that we use singularity is that we start with a Docker file, there we can, uh, we can easily trace what is happening. So one is building the, building an image and pushing, to Docker Hub, and then so singularity, the, the, the user experience. So if you use a CentOS, this is what we check to, to install it is just two command lines. So it's very easy to install. Then if you want to build from your from Docker Hub, your uh, uh, image is just one command. And previously you run it probably something like this. Now you just have to add the uh, one to other. So singularity, exact, then you copy the MPI run, and then the image, and then the, the path in the application. So we experienced uh, yeah, ease in uh, using the singularity. It's not very complicated then. But in order to work with your host system, uh, you, you need to have some compatibility. So this is something that, uh, and uh, to have a MPHA BI compatible implementation is something that can help. So now about, uh, what about the, the results? So what we did, we, we benchmark. So the, the bandwidth, we did 1000 iterations, so 10 times more than the, the standard one for the bandwidth and uh, we use as a host the, the MVA pitch 2.2. And uh, so E stands for uh, Euler. Here A stands for, for Azure. And N is native and then container. And we use the same host uh, always on Euler, so the same library. What we notice is that when we use a container, either the same uh, version of the library or uh, a newer one, the, we didn't notice any performance regarding the bandwidth. On Azure, the bandwidth is also very, very impressive. And here, the native one and also in container. So container are not, uh, here we notice this uh, big, change but for very small uh, messages so otherwise uh, then what so on Azure we can also use uh, MPitch but what we notice that is not using the, the infinite band so if you built a container I'll show you how so the normal one not then uh, infinite band is not used and um, what we also notice on Azure that if I'll put in the container MVA pitch, then I'll get the infinite band. And Open MPI is not compatible in any way with uh, MPitch, so you cannot put like MPitch and open on the host and uh, 
open MPI in the container and expect uh, expect to work. So now what about uh, the latency? So what we notice for latency, there is a, on Azure, the latency is not as good as on Euler, but it's nevertheless in the, the same scale. So it's like 20, 30 percentage. Uh, the latency is uh, higher. Yeah. And uh, so now how, what, the, the container? So here for the container, we use, uh, we use the CentOS and uh, well, we just install uh, the normal stuff. And then we, when we build it, we build it uh, with uh, the recommended flag. So for uh, MVP, this is one. The flag that we use because and for MPH we enable household and that's all and of course we added uh, the the prefix. Then when we run it, we didn't add any flag to optimize or to we just ran it simply MPI run minus MP two and uh, give the host and do the the benchmarking. So now this is about uh, MPI application, but uh, if we look at the cloud and traditional system, if we use uh, NVIDIA card, it's a similar story. So here I'll just show you some preliminary results for TensorFlow on Azure. So here no statistics, it's just one iteration and time to solution. So there is the new N series from, uh, from um, Azure where they have eight Tesla cars on one VM. So we use this one and then we tried first with CUDA 9 on the on the host. Then we because we can we can we upgrade it to CUDA 10. We notice the improvement in the time to solution. And then we put it in a container and we didn't notice any degradation in uh, performance. How does it look here? The, the container, so in the container, we have the driver installed. Then we added the CUDA DNN. Then we added NCCL with, its, with OpenMPI and the TensorFlow uh, GPU for was uh, installed. So this is the the container that uh, we use and on the host, the installation is very similar. So now we can uh, conclude. So the conclude regarding the user experience on Azure, I would say that the HPC in the cloud is catching up. They provide systems in preview that you can do a Slurm cluster and we have an infinite band in terms what we tested was the latency and the bandwidth. And there are big machines for, uh, for uh, machine learning that are much easier to set up than, uh, than a Slurm cluster. Then about the singularity containers. So I, what we experience is that once the host and the container are similar, there's no overhead. But HPC and the, like MPI partially breaks the, the portability of the containers because the container, the, the, what is in the container should be compatible with the infrastructure that we, you have on the host and the implementation that you enable on the host. And uh, yeah, updated CUDA driver helped in our case in terms of time to solution. So thank you very much. I'd like to thank uh, for the, to Alexander from Unibern and then to Thomas, uh, Urban, Sam from SIS and uh, to Lukas and uh, Andy from Microsoft Azure. And I uh, again, I 
would like to have more answer regarding the regarding the how the infrastructure provider are ready for the container use. So please fill in uh, the survey. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? So I, I, I did not look at the cost. Uh, my interest was, uh, was only the feasibility. But uh, from my understanding, uh, the, the expectation of the competitiveness regarding the cost is not yet there. So I, what I, I think by heart I can say that the per virtual call, it's 0 0.04 per virtual call hour. It's this scale. But uh, the, the prices are available, so one can check. Is there no additional questions? So we have 15 minutes.